So as well as the standard smartphone shenanigans, this week's big shiny Poco launch saw the Chinese manufacturer spaff out its very first smartwatch. This watch right here, in fact, which I've had strapped to my arm for just over a week now. The simply titled Poco Watch boasts some premium specs and features including a punchy AMOLED screen, all the usual fitness tracking tools including built-in GPS support and some pleasing battery life, all packed into this weenie wrist-sized device. So is the Poco Watch a smarter, cheaper alternative to the Samsung Watch, Apple Watch, yada yada? Well, here's my full in-depth Poco Watch review. And for more on the latest and greatest tech, please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers. So first up, gotta say that I really love how the Poco Watch sports a decidedly asexual design. Oh no, hang on, wait, that's not the right term at all because that would suggest that this watch doesn't f And let me tell you, the Poco Watch definitely f it f**ks pretty hard. What I meant was it's not really gender specific because that compact lightweight finish will suit more feminine wrists like my own as well as big old burly man arms. This is easily one of the skinniest smartwatches I've reviewed in recent times measuring just under a centimetre at its thickest point. While the 31 gram weight including the strap means you won't even feel it when it's stuck to you 24 hours a day. There's only a small number of colour options available at launch for the Poco Watch and if you're not too tempted by this standard black model, your other choices are basically blue or ivory. So where on earth is the bright yellow version? Like bright yellow being the colour that everyone immediately associates with Poco. I mean look, even the box for the Poco Watch is incredibly yellow. Who knows, maybe that'll come later. And certainly the Poco Watch seems rugged enough so far. I've bashed that matte chassis and that display off plenty of work surfaces on the edge of my desk a good few times this past week. As you can see there, there's sod all sticky out bezels to actually protect the display and touch wood so far still perfectly scratch free. And the Poco Watch is blissfully comfortable to wear all day long every day as well, helped along by the extremely lightweight design. Thankfully it seems to be a good quality silicon style strap as well. I've had absolutely no rashes or skanky skin issues after a full week of having it slapped on my wrist. And the Poco Watch, like many smartwatches these days, even the more budget friendly ones, is water resistant down to a depth of five atmospheres. So no worries if you want to go snorkeling or you know just leave it on when you're in the swimming pool. It does have full swim tracking as well, but more on that in a bit. Now setting up the Poco Watch was so simple that even a Geordie could do it with minimal help from his mates. All you need to do is download the Mi Fitness app onto your smartphone. It's available on the Google Play Store and also the Apple App Store. And then in just a minute or two, you can get your smartwatch paired to your smartphone using Bluetooth 5.0. The Mi Fitness app is pretty comprehensive. So you've got all kinds of different settings and features that you can play around with here via the app. So for instance, you can change up the watch face. Again, more on that in a bit. You can set up your app notifications. So every time one of these apps receives a notification, your watch will buzz and give you a brief preview. And you can switch this on or off for basically every app on your smartphone. Comprehensive coverage. You also have access to all of your health monitoring features via the app as well. So for instance, you can see whether you want that 24 hour a day heart rate monitoring. By default, it'll take a reading every half an hour or so, which I think is perfectly fine. But you can, if you want, have a reading taken every single minute of the day. For the old SpO2 measurements, the blood oxygen levels, it doesn't take automatic readings throughout the day, only while you're asleep if you want to. Got usual stress tracking, sleep tracking, and then if you want to, you can have your Poco Watch occasionally annoy you by buzzing your wrist and telling you to get off your ass and stop eating pork scratchings and watching Holmes under the hammer. You can also select your favourite workouts from in here as well, so you just get rid of any stuff you're highly unlikely to do, uh, which for in my case is basically all of this stuff. There's plenty of other settings you can play around with and from within here you can also update the Poco Watch. Now the Poco Watch's 1.6 inch AMOLED display is an absolute beaut, easily rivaling the screens that you'll find on most other premium price smartwatches. The 360 by 320 pixel resolution means those visuals are supremely crisp so you can easily read all of the tiny text as long as your peepers are up to it of course. And of course you've got all the other advantages of OLED displays including sharp contrast, you've got some really nice vivid poppy colours there and super wide viewing angles as well so you can just surreptitiously glance at your watch from an angle and still clearly see what the time is etc. And the Poco Watch does support an auto brightness feature as well so it gets reasonably dim in the evenings and then when you skip your way merrily down the high street on a sunny day it does boost that brightness all the way up. I got no complaints with the peak brightness, everything was perfectly legible even when the sun did decide to shine and of course because it is an AMOLED display that also means you get the always on display option if you don't want to be constantly raising your wrist in a dramatically over exaggerated manner in order to see what the time is etc. 
And while that display isn't quite edge to edge exactly, the bezels surrounding it aren't exactly super chunky, so not too much to complain about. And like Xiaomi's smartwatches, you've got a respectable selection of watch faces to choose between. Not a massive number pre-installed, as you can see there, but you can easily jump online, grab some new ones, including some Poco specific efforts. So even if you can't have a bright yellow smartwatch, at least you can turn the screen bright yellow. So there you go, Poco, passionate, powerful, cool, fast, young fun. I'm not entirely sure about Young Fun, that does sound a little bit Jimmy Savile-esque. As always, you've got a choice of mechanical ones, digital, analogue, and a variety of cartoony style ones as well, if you're more into that. They are undeniably cute. Unfortunately, you can't customise a lot of the elements on most of these uh, watch faces. So for instance, you can't say, I don't want a battery meter, I just want today's actual date, please. Now, it's no massive shock that the UI here on the uh, the Poco watch is very similar to the one you'll find on the Xiaomi watches, like the Watch S1, which I recently reviewed, because, of course, the bonds between Xiaomi and Poco are clearly still very strong indeed. As usual, you can turn on your watch with just a quick tap of this little button here. Otherwise, there is a raise to wake feature as well. This takes you into your main watch face. If you flick left and right, that's how you access all of your Poco Watch widgets. And these are the standard affairs, like sort of your heart rate monitoring, you've got your SPO2 levels, exercise tracking, and of course, a brief overview of how many steps you've taken, how many active hours you've had, etc. Media controls in there as well. If there's any you don't like, you can just dive into the widgets section on the Mi Fitness settings and get rid of them. You can also add in sleep and stress tracking. And just as with the Xiaomi watch, the UI is slightly reversed here on the Poco watch compared with a lot of competitors, Wear OS watches, etc. Because you have to swipe up in order to access your settings and toggles and then swipe down to access notifications. The notification support is pretty basic, unfortunately, here on the Poco watch. Uh, like a lot of watches that aren't an Apple watch or a Wear OS watch, all you can do is get a brief preview of what's ticked through. And unfortunately, that's it. You can't delete the message. You can't respond to it. Uh, unfortunately, sod all. So yeah, the notification support may be pretty basic on the Poco watch, but I had no issues with the syncing between my smartwatch and my smartphone, the S22. Every time I got a notification on that phone, my wrist would immediately buzz about half a second later, if that even. Likewise, not a huge selection of toggles here on the Poco Watch either. You've got your usual do not disturb mode, torch mode. You can set an alarm and you can also dive into the main smartwatch settings. This replicates a lot of the settings that you'll find in the Mi Fitness app, including uh, the ability to switch watch faces. You've got a do not disturb mode. You've got your workouts. Turn on the always on display. Set exactly how long the screen wakes up for. You can also set the vibration intensity via the Poco Watch settings. And let me tell you, even on the default settings, that was certainly strong enough to attract my attention. It's a very eager little buzz, it is. And then back at the main watch face, you can tap that side button again to access your apps menu. And yes, it is a small selection of apps here on the Poco Watch, not really expandable at all. You don't have a proper dedicated app store, but you do have all the basics covered off in here, including your stopwatches, timers, got a compass, etc. And of course, yes, breathing exercises. We do love a good breathing exercise, complete with, again, some serious rumble support. Unfortunately, when it comes to performance, not exactly super smooth here on the Poco Watch. This is clearly one of the areas where Poco has kind of scaled things back a bit in order to reach a lower asking price. Occasionally, when the watch first wakes up, it can take a moment or so after you swipe the screen before something actually happens, like it's just had one too many whiskey sours and needs that extra bit of thinking time before actually taking action. In particular, scrolling through your notifications list feels very lethargic indeed. It just takes a lot of swiping to actually get through there and everything's a bit sort of stuttery. I did notice the occasional little quirk as well. So for instance, sometimes when I was flicking through the widgets, it would just quickly for a split second flash back to the main watch face before actually cutting to the widget that I was trying to swipe to. But you know, at the time I'm shooting this video, the Poco Watch is still pre-launch, let alone pre-release. So hopefully these little bugs will be squashed before it actually hits stores. And while I am griping about stuff, there's also no built-in mic or speaker here on the Poco Watch. So no assistant support, no ability to take calls via the watch, etc. And also, if you happen to be into your fitness shiz, well, as long as you're not expecting hardcore support here, just more casual exercise tracking, then you and the Poco Watch should get on absolutely fine. The likes of the heart rate tracking seems perfectly accurate, certainly compared with any other smartwatch that I've tested recently. And then if you want to actually track an exercise, you can either swipe to the widget and uh, begin it that way. Otherwise, you can also do it via the apps menu. And yes, the Poco Watch does support a hundred plus fitness modes covering most of the usual arm flapping, arse jiggling ways that people try and burn off all of that saggy, flabby waist stuff. 
You've got some pretty obscure stuff in here, some very niche things like artistic swimming, for instance. And good old paddle boredom, which seems quite popular these days, although I still maintain that you can't do that without looking like an utter knob. And so I just finished a boxing training session. This is so you can see the fitness tracking in full swing. As you can see, you can see exactly how long you've been going for, your current heart rate, calories burned as well if you're interested in a bit of that. If you swipe this way, you can pause or end your workout. And if you swipe the other way, you can play around with whatever podcast or music you're listening to to really get you going. Media controls work absolutely flawlessly. And then uh, when you are finished, as I say, you can also just hold down the uh, side button if your fingers are a bit too sweaty to actually operate the screen. And then you're given an overview of exactly uh, what you managed to accomplish, including a reasonably accurate kilocalorie count, your heart rate throughout, uh, and also at the end, if you leave it gone, you can see your recovery rate. You can see exactly uh, what categories you fit into aerobic respiration, anaerobic, etc. And then that information is immediately synced with the Me Fitness app, so you can uh, check out your workout in retrospective as well. And the Boca Watch also boasts built in GPS support as well for three systems GLONASS, Galileo, and then Beardow, Beardu, however you're supposed to pronounce that one. And it seems to do the job absolutely fine for, you know, just tracking a bit of a wander down the street, bit of a hike or whatever. But if you are using it to track running, can't vouch for it on that front, unfortunately, because do I look like I run for anything? I mean, if this house was burning down around me right now, the best I could muster up is probably a half hearted jog to the exit. The sleep tracking, as usual, a little bit wishy-washy, to be perfectly honest. It didn't quite recognise all the numerous times I was awake during the night last night, for instance, as I got some really solid sleep. But to be fair, it's no worse than any other smartwatch out there. You can also get a uh, readout of your average heart rate as you had your bit of kip. And then last up, Poco Rankings, you'll get up to 14 days of battery life on a single charge of the Poco Watch. But as always, of course, do take that estimate with a massive dose of salt because I personally found that once I turned on the always on display, the 24 hour heart rate tracking and most of the other decent features, notifications support, of course, as well. I actually got closer to three to four days of use from a single charge of this bad boy, especially if I actually made use of the exercise tracking once a day. Some of the apps, you know, the timer and the stopwatch and such forth. So, you know, the Pocket Watch ain't as good as some rivals from like some Huawei and Xiaomi, but look at the size of this thing. It's absolutely teeny. And the fact that it lasts a full three to four days on a single charge, that means you can charge it up before a long weekend away somewhere and not even have to worry about it. Taking the, you know, the dinky little magnetic dock. And it's still a damn sight better than most premium rivals like the Apple Watch, the Samsung Watch, which tend to last a day, maybe two, if you are really, really strict with how you use it. So that right there in a nutshell is my review of the Poco Watch after using it as my full-time smartwatch for a week. And I do like quite a lot about it. You know, it's a very nice, slender, lightweight smartwatch. If you're looking for something like that, you've got quite dainty wrists like myself. I'll certainly do the job there. Battery life in bad at all. Gorgeous display on this thing. And it has most of the sort of standard smartwatch features, including dedicated fitness tracker. And you've got a good selection of watch faces on there. Some decent customization. But of course, if you do want the option to download fresh apps and really expand the functionality of your smartwatch, you also want that really smart notification support, you will have to bump up your budget and go for something like a Samsung watch or an Apple watch instead. So that's what I think anyway. But what about you guys? Be great to your thoughts down in the comments below. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a bloody lovely rest of the week. Cheers, everyone. Love you.